Welcome back, everybody, to Growing Organic. All right, today we are growing blueberries. I'm going to show you how to do this, so stick around. Okay, there's one here. We got two different varieties. And there's another one here. And the thing with blueberries, you do want to plant two different varieties because blueberries do a lot better when there's a pollinator, so a different variety. So we'll put this right here. So two different types. I got it two different nurseries. And you can see this says a low chill requirement. We're here in San Diego and it's very warm climate zone 10B. So this will work great. You can see there's already tons of berries on this plant. This one doesn't have any yet. I got this one at Home Depot. This is called the Sunshine Blue. And this one is called the Bountiful Blue. We got our two blueberries and also our soil mix here. So this is one way of planting, which I would say the easiest way of planting blueberries is going to be uh, simply buying a specialty bag of soil that is formulated especially for blueberries, for growing blueberries. Now, there's other options as well. If you want to just um, use your existing soil, we can add an amendment to lower the pH because acid-loving plants are plants that love a low pH soil. Let's go ahead and look at the ingredients here. So you can see on the back of this right here as well, it says formulated for blueberries. So this soil mix is formulated perfectly for blueberries, so you don't have to mess around trying to mix a perfect blend of soil for your blueberries. Now let's go over something real quick. I want to show you what's in this and the reason it is good for acid loving plants. It's because these first three ingredients actually will lower the pH and make it more acidic. You've got aged fir bark, aged redwood, peat moss, those three things actually have a low pH. So let's go ahead and put some soil in the bottom. There's very, there's almost no perlite in here whatsoever. That's very interesting about this mix. And that's because perlite has a very, very high pH of about 7.0. And we need to be at about a 5.0. 5 that's the key, starting with good soil and then fertilizing with a good organic fertilizer and following the basic instructions. A lot of those fertilizers are already formulated specifically for these. So again, you don't have to worry about guessing. Okay, so what I wanna do on this grow pot, I wanna stay, keep the top of the existing container here about two inches down because what I'm gonna do is add two inches of shredded mulch. You can kind of see over here on this plant. See, this is a thick layer, two or three inches of shredded mulch. Okay, so I filled up the container about, about up to here. That's about a third of the way. And I kinda, I'm setting the pot in there and I kinda wanna smash the bottom down just real lightly to make sure this doesn't settle anymore once I put this in. And this is important point right now is getting the height just right. You don't want to set this right on the bottom. You need some root space underneath it. So again, about two inches from the dirt level. I want to be about two inches here and then add the mulch like this over here. All right, so we got the height right. You can see I kind of leveled it out. What I'm going to do now, this is a very important part, is we're going to do this, the mycos. We're gonna do about a tablespoon and sprinkle it around, that should do. And then, but before that, I wanna take worm castings. I'm gonna put about two cups. I'll put about a cup on the bottom, sprinkle it in here. Let's just get about a handful. Okay, go about like that much. Maybe a little more. So right away, we got some good worm castings right there. I'm gonna stir that around just a little bit Set that back down. 
But when you're planting the actual plant, this is the most important thing is getting this in there when you plant the actual plant. So let's do about half of it. It's kind of like a baking powder or flour consistency. All right, that's perfect. Now I'll save a little bit of that because we're gonna sprinkle some of that on the actual roots. Let's see here. Try to get this out while I'm filming. I'm gonna just pull on that. Okay, this thing's still pretty fragile, so I really needed to use two hands. So let's go ahead and put this in. Oh, pumpkin, are you gonna sit on the bag? Oh, you cozy over there? right on top of that mycorrhizal fungi. Now let's get the rest of this. Now I wanna do is try to get it, I'm gonna tap the side like this and sprinkle it, just tossing the, the rest around. right on those roots. Okay, you can see it's kind of sprinkled on there. All right, I'm gonna do just a little bit more of the worm castings. Just to, I'm gonna sprinkle, just dust it around. So let's go ahead and top this off. Now I'll just kind of pull up on it a little bit like that and then pack. You wanna take your fingers and go right along the edge like that Make sure that's snug down in there. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and put the mulch over the top. This is just um, wood chips. They cut up a, cut down a tree behind our house and I asked the, the actual tree trimming company if I could load up about four or five trash can full of their wood chips and they said no problem. So I got all these for free. This used to be a giant, I think it was a ficus tree. So these are the leaves, the twigs, the sticks, the bark, the branches, everything ground up in a giant uh, wood chipper. It just breaks it all down into this really nice size. So this is what you want, something that will break down. All those small particles are a lot of the leaves and small small chunks, and those will turn into fertilizer. And also protect your soil. This will keep your soil from drying out and all the microbes in there, keep them happy. Um, you never wanna leave the soil uncovered. And it just looks a lot nicer too when you have that layer of mulch. Pumpkin, what are you doing inside the bag? That's not a bed. Uh, pumpkin just got really creative in this little shady spot under my avocado tree. Very creative. Again, if you want to adjust the pH of your water, that might help as well using lemon water and a pH tester. So I have it formulated with my water. I can add, I think it's like two milliliters of lemon juice per gallon, and I can get the uh, pH down. Because I have ha actually tap water, even though it's filtered, this is ran through a three-stage filtration system. It still has a pH of about 8.0. That's really, really high, very alkaline and you definitely don't want a high alkaline water on these consistently because your plants will start struggling. So first what I want to do, get a container like this. This will catch any of the fertilizer and water because you don't, first, the last thing you want is all the nutrients to drain out onto the ground. And try to keep it off the concrete. Get a couple of pieces of wood sticks like a two by four, a couple two by fours, 
and then pick it up, set it on that. That will insulate it off this hot concrete. I got my water. Let's go ahead and water this. So I'm using about one entire gallon for this five gallon pot. The blueberries are gonna want a consistent watering, so it may be, try to water twice a week, but I don't think you'll need a two, an entire gallon every, every watering, every, you know, twice a week. It really depends on your temperature and you want to feel the weight of your plant as well. So you can kind of pull on it like that and you'll get it used to the weight, what it feels like when it's dry or when it's wet. Because right now you can feel it is really heavy after putting a gallon of water. Okay, I want to show you guys one more thing here. I'm planting this second one. Now look at this. Look at how root bound that is. So in that situation, before you plant it, you want to break up this, these roots, go like this with your hand, all the way around the entire thing. We want to go ahead and break that up. Just tear at it. Because what that, that is going to do is allow new roots to grow. It's going to actually stimulate the root growth so all the way around all the way up to the top completely loosen that outer especially down here at the bottom to the very underneath you want to really tear at it you may think that you're damaging the plant but fortunately we need to do this so keep an eye on that this was a lot different than that last plant we put in over here that was barely even rooted Yet this one is completely root bound. And then one more thing with this other plant. There's a little bigger and a little deeper pot. I upgraded to a seven gallon. There's no need going directly into a five gallon if it's already this root bound at this size. If you live in an area where there's pine trees, you're probably going to be really happy that you do because pine needles are great as mulch, they're actually very an acid acidifying mulch. So keep that in mind. If you have pine trees, pine needles will work great. Again, I got to get a uh, a tray underneath. All right, guys. Hopefully those tips helped you out a little bit. And if these guys want to sponsor me, that'd be great. Since I'm using their products, and we'll do a following update about a year from now and we'll see what it looks like after planting them and using this technique. All right, see you guys next time. I'm out of here. Peace.